This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now in Lernskog, and behind me here you see yet another 24 kilowatt hour e-golf and you know, based on the previous video about the degradation test of the other e-golf then uh, a nice guy named Johannes contacted me and he offered to lend me his e-golf and we're gonna check it how is the degradation this one because the previous one I tried from Muskis Bill has done only 48,000 kilometers this one is one year older and has done over 100,000 kilometers so the car has been uh, charged to 100% in the garage over here I just drove 100 meter to get here. Uh, the battery should be fairly full. Maybe I'll add 100 watt hour to the calculation. But you see the odometer on this one. Oh yeah, 115,000. <laughs> okay. And then based on what I know, the, this owner and the previous owner, he's been charging the car to 100%, mostly at home and not much fast charging, a little bit maybe. So, uh, by the way, I tried to use the OBD uh, adapter thing. I will show you that uh, the OBD port is under here. I hooked it up and then I went into EV Notify. And then for some reason, there is no information there. I tried everything. I tried to uninstall it, up latest version, everything. Uh, there is no information. It's kind of buggy also on the app. I'm not sure what's up with that. So, uh, okay, anyway, uh, we don't need that anyway. We can just uh, look at the display here and calculate stuff. And I can show that uh, there's a very complicated, if I do this, if I stop the car now and I start it, you will briefly see trip there. Oh, I don't know if you saw it, the trip shows. I just found out how to reset it. So what you have to do is you have to hold down this trip meter here. And then time comes and then you hold it down there. Now you let off and then you say switch it. And then it will switch the trip. And now when you're driving, we will have the trip available. We'll see the trip here, but uh, it's very convenient to have the range. So what I'm going to do is hold it down again. It's very complicated how to do this. You can set time here also. There and then switch the range. You want to see this one for the test and then we can always switch back to see it or I can just start and stop the car to see the, the trip the, because this one shows you decimal on the trip. Uh, this one doesn't show you. Okay, maybe I should reset here. It doesn't matter that much, but okay, let me do a little reset. Uh, also very clumsy how you reset. You have to go to, where is this again? Service? No, 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 not that one. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's been a while since I drove the, the e-golf, but uh, I had to figure out, it was one place you have to reset. It's really complicated. Uh, Multifunction display, uh, here it is. Yeah, you see this one, and then suddenly you have reset since start. Yeah, so let me do all that stuff, and then we start driving. We have been driving for a while now. We just passed Gardermoen Airport, and uh, now heading towards Dahl. So we are down to, well, how many percent is this? It's Weissnisch, 65% maybe. <laughs> but we are cruising at 94 kilometers per hour. So I've decided to use the since charging uh, trip meter because actually this one comes from uh, when we unplug, whereas the since start uh, has a higher average speed, but uh, the car was on with HVAC off for a little while, actually, yeah, while I was setting up. So since charging should give me a more correct uh, data. So, all right. What, what, what's that? What's that? Oh, yeah. Lane assist, take over steering. Big fat beaver just hammered me. We're getting close to Oslo again. So um, let me show you that the noise level on these old cars might not be the best. So I'm going to change lane now to some smooth ass. Boof. Huh? <laughs> okay, let me try some rough ass again. Oh, semi rough. I need to get over to the leftmost lane. Yeah, this one is pretty rough. Whoa! Low range. Okay, but then let me get over to the smooth ass. Okay. Get over here. Slightly 
the better hair aren't this one uh, but this one is really smooth oh oh yeah so um well 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 i guess um, the electro auto wasn't that quiet back in the days right but you know what's funny people are gonna defend uh volkswagen and say but it's an old car come on give us some slack like, yeah yeah but then if i uh test some tesla from uh, 2015 or 14 and then say oh this is noisy people are like but it's tesla it's shit <laughs> that's how internet works we are now at Dele de Luca and the chem power chargers so here we see stats 134 watt hour kilometer but this was okay uh, the actual average speed was more like this uh, 133 okay so um, 120 I need to check the the actual uh, distance so let's see I guess if you look at this one all right if we stop Oh, okay, uh, come on. Yeah, I've have, shortened have more than everything. Let's fire it up again. 103.311. Okay, okay, I get the, the the decimal now. So let's plug it in, and then we calculate everything. Uh, it bugs me about low range and everything. All right, this time we are probably three percent. So uh, yeah, it seems like around three percent is when you get shortened mode. And then you see here it says vehicle limits. And if you click here, this is something Kempa reports. Uh, we are getting uh, the maximum speed uh, from the car, uh, for, according to the car at least. So uh, I guess the other Kempa doesn't have the same software. So yes, uh, it's just to indicate that it's, um, I mean, the reason why we are charging slow is not, not because the charger cannot deliver more, is basically because the vehicle is limiting it to 71, uh, 41 kilowatt. But uh, all right, we have to charge it, I guess, at least to 80%, a little bit above to see how fast we are charging. I'm going to look at this one for a bit. But right now, it looks pretty good. Okay, so while we're waiting for the charge, I can show you guys the car from the outside. Oh, wait, this one has the aerodynamic rims. The other car didn't have it. And also the tires. That's probably why it went so far and the consumption was low. Michelin Energy Saver. 205 55 16 hmm okay so other than that it just looks like more or less like all the other egos out there and i can show the interior so most egos i've seen they have dark interior this one has this bright beige interior true leather seat from holy cows back in the days when they actually slaughtered cows only to put the skin, use the skin and then throw away the meat. I'm just kidding. Bright headliner also. Let me check the back. Hmm. Okay, what the heck is this? Okay. Well, but yes, huh? You like it? You like it? You see? Deutsche design. Huh? Ski opening. Huh? All right. How is the charging going? All right. Oh, this is nice. Chem power charger estimates how many minutes we have left to 80% and 100%. Because the old cars nowadays, I don't remember if they estimate that. Well, okay, let me see here. Um, so if we look here now, 65%. Okay, so far so good. Let's wait until around 79%. I think it was when they were supposed to throttle. All right, there comes a the drop. Let me see. At 78%, okay, this is, uh, I guess, a little bug with the chem power, yeah. <laughs> but at 78% or 77, I'm not sure. I think this was more or less the same as uh, the other battery. Yeah, and then it will just drop until 22 kilowatt. But okay, I think we're good now. All right, we finished starting now, just move the car. So over to the juicy stuff, the degradation. So this car seems to use less energy than the other one I tried from Musk's build, but I think it's boiled down to the rims and the tires. 
on the other car. But it turns out that this car has lower capacity than the other one. And it kind of makes sense because we have roughly two and a half times more uh, mileage or odometer here versus the other one. And also we have seven years versus five and a half years on the other car. But um, so we managed to get 17 kilowatt hour from this one. And then it was 18.6 from the other e-golf. So yeah, that's, uh, hmm, that's actually, it sounds like a lot more. Uh, is it linear based on the number of cycles? Could be, but uh, again, like I said earlier, uh, the previous owner, the, the first owner before that one again, they've mainly been charging on home charging, slow charging, but they've been charging to 100%, not too much fast charging. Uh, and I think that could also be a problem because uh, this car does not have any charge limit so they just charge it to 100% which is roughly 95% I would guess. Um, but okay, so I guess if they want to do it better they need to avoid uh, going to 100%. Uh, maybe, yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Uh, they, ne they need to put the timer on something or stop it manually to avoid going to 100% because it's not healthy for the battery to, to stay at 100% too long. But um, also if you compare to the other cars in the list here, uh, we have, well, 12%, that's the closest one, but that's a Model S with way bigger battery. Uh, but at least if you look at the souls, yeah, look at the lost souls here. We have one soul that has gone, uh, it's younger, it has done less mileage or kilometers, but it has more uh, more degradation. And the same for the, oh, you want to mention the other soul, the other soul with 35% degradation. Uh, yeah, actually, you see, that one kind of matches the profile has roughly the same age, but even lower uh, odometer, but way more degradation. So uh, actually, in a couple of days now, I will test yet another Soul 27 kilowatt hour. Let's see what we get from that one. He claims that it's in fairly good state and it's not that bad as the worst Soul here. So uh, yes, now I'm actually open. If you guys have an EV and you live close to Oslo and you want me to test it, I'm, I'm more than happy to test it for you uh, to see what kind of degradation we have. We, have, we need to gather more data and learn more about this. But one last thing I will uh, explain to you guys is that uh, uh, when I, okay, the problem is that I don't know how many kilowatt hour this battery had when it was branch banking new, but I have lots and lots of data over the years about how stuff works. I'm going to tell you. So yes, according to spec sheets, maybe uh, manufacturer claims this car might have 21, 21.5 kilowatt hour when it was new, the net capacity. But remember that, oh yeah, by the way, I should also explain, some people are confused, what, uh, but Tesla is 85 kilowatt hour, right? Why are you counting 75 kilowatt hour? We have something called gross capacity, the whole battery, and then it's up to the car manufacturer how they utilize the whole battery. Um, so what is very common, actually pretty much every EV out there must have a bricking protection. So at the very bottom, you cannot discharge the last, uh, usually last 10%. If you go below that one, you can destroy the batteries. That's bricking protection. And then you usually have the usable capacity above it that you can use. And then some kind of car manufacturer, they also have a top buffer, very common for German cars. Also the Korean cars that have top buffer, which means that you think you're charging the 100%, but if you actually look into the BMS, you are charging to roughly 95%. And I guess that's the way for the car manufacturer to uh, avoid uh, too much degradation. Uh, but what they should have done is like Tesla already back in the days, they implemented a uh, charge limit. So you can set how many percent you want to charge to. And then by that one, you, you prevent too much degradation. Um, but okay, so that was the top buffer. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, also I also forgot to mention some cars, they might also have a, a, a zero mile buffer. Tesla tends to have it, which is that even when it claims to be zero percent, uh, you, you actually have three to five kilowatt hour. You can drive uh, 15, 20 kilometers below zero. Also the, the Leaf 40 and the Leaf 62 kilowatt hour also has it. So in some cars, they have that buffer, but what I measure is the one you see the 100% down to 0% when I do range tests, also when I do this, because most people, they don't go below zero, uh, and then most people can't utilize whatever is 
at the top buffer anyway. But you see, when you're looking at that uh, uh, net uh, capacity, the, the nominal capacity, for example, this one claims to be over 21 kilowatt hour, usually you can't get that because Remember, how do I measure range and how do I measure degradation? I measure it by actually driving it. This is what I claim is the correct way to do it because by the end of the day, what are you supposed to do with the car? Well, you're supposed to drive it. And when you drive it, you have hills, you have downhills, uphill, you have acceleration. So there's lots of variations that will put stress load on the battery. And therefore you have heat loss because again, this is something we have seen over and over again that when you discharge a battery, the battery uh, has some heat coming out. And that one is not measured by the car's instrument. You don't know how much it is, but based on the, the claim capacity, uh, you can then estimate and calculate how much it is. So typically for Tesla, for example, the BMS will claim that, for example, you have uh, 70 kilowatt hour, but when I do the actual driving, I only get 69 kilowatt hour. What happened to that one kilowatt hour that the battery or the BMS claims it has? Well, it was turned into heat and then as we drive, the battery slowly heats up a little bit. So that's why I claim that this car initially had uh, 20 kilowatt hour based on lots and lots of other experiences I have with similar cars. For example, I never tested this type of car uh, initially, but I did test the 35.8 kilowatt hour battery and I was able to pull out around 30 something kilowatt hour from it. And then based on what I know about the e-golf that it has top buffer, that it doesn't have that much below, I mean, it doesn't have a zero buffer and that roughly 10% of the battery capacity is bricking protection. Then, uh, and also based on the bigger battery, then I managed to calculate through that we should have run 20 kilowatt hour when it was new. So, of course, this is kind of hard to guess uh, since we haven't tested it, but we have already pretty good data to kind of guess roughly how it should be, right? So, yes, hopefully this video was useful for you and you might have learned something about this. So, uh, again, I'm gonna try more more videos because I mean more cars because I find it interesting to start testing cars and nowadays we're getting more and more uh, used cars out there that might have high degradation so it would be very useful for you to know which car should you avoid and which car should you go for so um, yeah I think that's gonna be it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later